So this week we talked about maximizing your ROI for lead conversion. So I think it all starts with knowing where your leads are actually coming from. It is the first thing you need to know and know your conversion rates on that and what to expect. And then from there, if you track your numbers really well, you can scale. So there's some things that we talked about in our mastermind on how to convert a lot better. But first thing we talked about is where are these leads coming from and what are the conversion rate through the industry, uh, the average on that. So, you know, when you go to the top of the funnel, Topo is which is the top of the funnel leads, which that's going to be mostly like your social media leads. They're going to convert it like one less than 1%. Generally, on a national average, through all the realtors in the country, they convert less than 1%. So, knowing that if you're running Facebook ads, Instagram ads, anything with social media, you know, they're going to convert really, really low. They're super cheap to get. But the problem with them is there's no intent behind the search. You know, they're more of a disruptor that we stopped them in the feed. They clicked on a shiny house and they got squeezed and registered for the property. So you can be highly profitable with them as long as you know you don't have to go through a lot of them to find the one that's ready to do something out. Generally, they're 6 to 12 months out. You know, they've got um, buying a home on their mind, but they're just a little bit farther out. Next, you move into the mofo middle of the funnel. So with the middle of the funnel, these are going to be like your Google and Bing, PPC, pay-per-click ads. You know, so they, they've got intent. They went to the web, you know, uh, Google and they search for homes in Jackson, homes in Madonna, wherever. And then they landed on your ad and they, you got squeezed their information. So generally, these people are three to six months out. Um, these are highly profitable uh, if you know how to do the correct follow-up with them, you know, in the correct order. So just know they're three to six months out. If you can wait for that conversion rate to kick in, these are probably the most profitable leads out there. Um, so if they convert to 2 to 3% uh, is, is the national conversion rate on them. So then we move on to the bottom of the funnel, which are these going to be like your portal leads, which is like Zillow, Realtor.com, City, all these leads. So there's highly intent behind them. They went to a, a specific website. Uh, and search for properties and request the information about a specific property. So they're at the bottom of the funnel. I like to relate this to like when you go car shopping, as in you've done, drove the car lots many Sundays, not talked to anyone, and then you got there and you're ready to test drive. These are what these people are at. They're ready to test drive homes just as you would like to test drive a car. Um, a lot of times they don't care who opens the door. They just want to see just as you don't care. Uh, who opens the, you know, gives you the car keys to go test drive. So remember that, you know, uh, generally they convert about 5%, you know, national average. Some some big teams do a little bit better with them that are actually tracking them, but on general average, they're about 5%. They're low, they cost a lot more, um, but they convert a little bit easier, which some people, they would rather pay more than have to uh, follow up on all these leads. So knowing this, this kind of helps us, you know, on our conversion rate so we understand kind of where we're at. So then we talked about, when we came over here and talked about, okay, what are the things that we need to get, you know, when we're talking to them, depending on where they are in the sales cycle of buying or selling, you know, what, are we need, what do we need to talk to them about? So there's an old script that I was taught a long time ago. It's called LP Mama, you know, location, price, motivation, uh, agent, mortgage, appointment. So them are, the, them are the top things you're always trying to get from all the leads on the initial call. To kind of then you know your follow up schedule and your timelines for everyone. So LP Mama is is it's an old script. It always works. I have it here. I've used it a million times. Uh, it works um, just like it's advertised. So know that. So the next thing we talked about is is LP Mama works really good with these right here. You can set. Uh, buyer broker appointments with using the LP Mama script really easy. You can get drop them to a Zoom call or you can drop them to a face to face meeting to sign the buyer broker, do your buyer presentation to get them to sign the buyer broker. You should be treating buyers just like you treat sellers. You should be getting a uh, buyer broker agreement saying that you're working together just like you would with a seller. You wouldn't market a seller's house without a listing agreement. So the problem with that, the LP Mama script is when you're at the bottom of the funnel right here, uh, working Zillow, Realtor, City leads, they are ready to go. They want, they, they've made it to mind, they're ready to buy, you know, and they're ready to go, uh, go look at houses. And that's all they want. So if we start with all these questions before we even get to the appointment, we kind of like offend them, uh, and they put their guard up really, really high. So you've always got to remember, uh, people see us as salespeople, you know, and they've got their guard up because they think we're selling stuff. So remember that. 
So the way to combat that is if you're working a bottom of the funnel lead is you want to use, I've got this script right here that I call the uh, buyer trust form. So we come out right, right out the gate and say, and we agree to show them the property. We agree to set the appointment to get it scheduled and everything else. That is one of the first things we do. And then we go into like all our questionnaire. We call it discovery phase. Uh, this is, I call this the buyer trust form because we're asking them a lot of information to try to, so we can pinpoint exactly what they want. We gave them the appointment. Now we're trying to get the information that we want so we can best service and help these people. So, and then at the end, we can turn around and based off the criteria and the information they give us, we can make a business decision. Are, you know, are these people, um, someone we're going to go out and meet or we're going to sign a buyer broker agreement? A lot of times you have to go out and meet these people first to build trust, um, with them. So if you, uh, I will put the uh, buyer trust form down below so you can download. Uh, download it, and if you message me, you'll see that there's three animals at the bottom of it. Um, if you message me, I'll tell you what they're for. So, again, my name is Matt Lane with First Class Real Estate Advisors. Yeah, I hope this is helpful, and I hope this helps you out a lot. Thanks.